Hey there, I'm Josh. So let me ask you something. Do you like SpongeBob? I mean, I personally think the show is pretty cool. I mean, imagine some guy in like 1999 writing a show about talking sea creatures, among them a starfish and a sea sponge, and like seeing that turn into one of the most famous names of television entertainment ever. I mean, in the sense that its main character is an immobile filter feeder that looks like a household object that lives in an underwater pineapple house and works the grill at a burger restaurant. SpongeBob SquarePants kind of feels like a predecessor to every network staple really weird shows where the main characters are food items or inanimate objects stuff like that. Regardless, it was and still is a cultural phenomenon lasting over two decades and still airing, making it the fifth longest running American animated series ever behind Family Guy, South Park, Arthur, and of course, The Simpsons. That's not even mentioning the staggering wake of its impact on television and comedy and meme culture in the past 20 years. Despite the fact that the show's quality has fluctuated heavily over the years, with many fans being disappointed with SpongeBob's post-2004 episodes, it is clear that the show has done its best to innovate and find a new audience, which it indeed has. Chances are that you, as a viewer, really like SpongeBob SquarePants and either watched it a lot or watched it a lot, and that's why you clicked on this theory in the first place. Or you're just curious to know what mathematical stuff I'm about to pull out of my account over on Reddit where I first made the post that this video originated from. So yeah, it'll be fun, just bear with me. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie was released in 2004, directed by the late Steven Hillenburg. It was Steven's last hurrah as showrunner until Sponge Out of Water, which he signed on to co-write in 2015. He returned to oversee the series in an unspecified position around this time up until his death in November of 2018. Rest in peace, Steven Hillenburg. When the first movie released, it was made as an attempted final episode, an end to the SpongeBob timeline, in a way. Though the episodes have continued to release, there is little evidence to suggest that any of them take place after the first movie. As the Krusty Krab 2 is never seen, SpongeBob is never referred to as manager, and Plankton has no knowledge of the secret formula's contents, among other things. You kind of know that when a show changes things, it's either doing it as a joke or something like that, like you might find in the real estate episode or the one where they're in caves, or like as a true plot point, as you see here with SpongeBob accepting his childishness and becoming manager of the Krusty Krab 2. So it is for this reason that the vast majority of SpongeBob fans agree that the SpongeBob SquarePants movie is the eternal finale of the series. It does raise me a question, though, and it is a rather stupid one. When does SpongeBob end? The series first aired in 1999, and the movie was released a mere five years later, but the passage of time in SpongeBob indicates far more than a simple five years. After all, SpongeBob says himself that he has earned 374 consecutive Employee of the Month awards. Terrible SpongeBob. 374 consecutive Employee of the Month awards. Naturally, this means SpongeBob has been working at the Krusty Krab for over 30 years, right? The math checks out. But what if I told you that this movie, that the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, took place this year? Not only this year, but this March, just a month from now when I'm writing this. Bear with me here. The history of the Employee of the Month award in SpongeBob is a confusing one. Due to the chaotically inconsistent nature of SpongeBob being a cartoon, only sometimes does the award exist. When it does, though, we can see some consistencies with each portrayal of the award. There appears to be a similar design and arrangement in each of its appearances, which means it's a consistent enough stream of events to follow. The first appearance of the Employee of the Month award is in the 25th episode of SpongeBob's first season, Employee of the Month. In this episode, the awards are arranged on a wall in the Krusty Krab's dining area. This is where we can start to establish a timeline. In the episode, SpongeBob claims to have been Employee of the Month 26 times in a row. This implies that SpongeBob has worked at the Krusty Krab for two years and two months at the time of this episode. But we don't know anything about these awards, right? For all we know, Mr. Krabs might have started giving out these awards when SpongeBob signed on, right? Surprisingly, we do have evidence that Mr. Krabs has been giving out employee awards since well before SpongeBob started the job, as seen in the season 5 episode, The Original Fry Cook. Behind all of SpongeBob's awards on the wall is a big award to the original Fry Cook, Jim, declaring him the best employee ever. This means that Employee of the Month was likely not a completely newly introduced scheme to keep Spongebob productive, as Mr. Krabs has been giving awards to his employees since Krusty Krabs' early days. We also know that Squidward doesn't care at all for the award, even speaking out about its stupidity in the Season 1 episode. This means that, by that episode, Spongebob has won every Employee of the Month since his hire about two years earlier. This is where things get interesting. You see this wall here with all the Employee of the Month awards on it? There aren't 26 awards. Yeah, go ahead and look, there are 43. SpongeBob is surprisingly good with numbers, meaning he can't have been lying when he said that he had been Employee of the Month 26 times, but what he didn't say was how many awards were being given out per month. Perhaps as some kind of morale or productivity booster for his employees, Mr. Krabs gives out a few Employee of the Month awards every year. 
Using the total of 43 awards over the course of 26 months, we get a rate of about 1.65 awards every month. This means that some months Krabs would be giving out one award, some months he'd be giving out two for some reason, and there's no way to actually know which months apply here. It's for this reason that while my math is all correct, it can't account for things such as the rate of awards changing over time. The only recorded time that Squidward has ever won Employee of the Month is in another Season 5 episode, A Breath of Fresh Squidward. In this episode, Squidward is shocked by an electric fence that he had put up around his house, and becomes so pleasant an octopus that, because of his antics, Mr. Krabs gives him Employee of the Month rather than Spongebob. The Employee of the Month wall, notably, has almost the exact same layout as it did in its first appearance, but with one more award on the wall. This means that, following the disaster of the Season 1 episode, Mr. Krabs ended up giving Spongebob the award. It's entirely possible Krabs skipped that month, but this will hardly matter in the final result. So far, the timeline of Employee of the Month starts with Spongebob's hire, about 27 consecutive Employee Awards going to Spongebob, and then Squidward's award in A Breath of Fresh Squidward. Seeing as this is the only time in the show's run that anyone other than Spongebob has won an award, we can assume that Spongebob held a legendary Employee of the Month award streak from A Breath of Fresh Squidward all the way up to the Spongebob Squarepants movie. Using the rate of awards per month that we calculated earlier, we can determine that these 374 consecutive awards actually occurred over the course of about 225 to 230 months. This, plus the 27 months of Spongebob's first streak and the one month that went to Squidward, adds up to around 250 to 260 months, or just under 22 years. Okay, so let's do the math. Spongebob's pilot episode aired on May 1st, 1999. We know that the Spongebob movie takes place in March of an unspecified year. Just under 22 years from 1999 brings us to a final date of March 2021. Okay, so we missed it, right? The Spongebob movie happened last year, yeah? math checks out, I mean, right? Does the math check out? No. Let me explain. In episode 15 of season 1 of Spongebob Squarepants, we're treated to a legendary scene in the Spongebob fanbase. For the first time ever, we see Spongebob's birthday, right there on his driver's license. And his birthday is July 14th, 1986. Why is this important? Because in May of 1999, Spongebob would have been 12. His birthday is in July, two months after the date of airing, meaning he wouldn't even have turned 13 until the summer of 1999. The minimum working age in the United States? 14. I should note that while Bikini Bottom is located within the territory of the Marshall Islands, it has a national anthem, meaning it isn't the United States. However, it usually operates as, and most importantly, is written as a typical United States town or region, with American accents, citizens celebrating the 4th of July, insert healthcare joke here, you get the idea. Bikini Bottom is meant by the writers to just be an inexplicably American town, with cartoonish but still relatively similar law systems. The laws in Bikini Bottom can be goofy at times, but all the jobs are held by adults. It's for this reason that the most likely time for Spongebob's pilot episode, Help Wanted, to take place is actually in 2000, one year after its air date. Spongebob would have turned 14 that year, going to snag the job opening at the Krusty Krab, finally old enough to legally hold a job. Keep in mind that Spongebob is a bit of a goody two-shoes, especially in the earlier seasons when he was less a figure of chaos, and Spongebob would certainly wait to get the job until he's of the right age. Mr. Krabs is skeptical on the grounds that it looks like he doesn't even have his sea legs. That's in the, that's literally in the script. But the young Spongebob takes on the challenge of finding the hydrodynamic spatula and feeding the anchovies, and he takes the job. Assuming with this information that Help Wanted takes place in the summer of 2000, all we need to do is add Spongebob's previously established time working at the Krusty Krab, just under 22 years. This would place the episode before summer in the spring of 2022. And what month does the Spongebob Squarepants movie claim to be in? March. So, there you have it, folks. The Spongebob Squarepants movie takes place this March, between March 7th and March 14th of 2022. This is the portion of the video where, contrary to some other theorists on YouTube, I actually become my own critic. So, is this theory true? Well, it depends on what you mean by that. All the math is right, albeit rounded for simplicity and estimated where information is missing. All the numbers are there. The issue is that Spongebob doesn't have a timeline. It's a wildly inconsistent show, and that's by design. I mean, and well over 90% of the episodes, Employee of the Month isn't even mentioned. So do I think this was intended? No, I don't think that the writers intended for the Spongebob Squarepants movie to have a set place in time. For all I care, the movie actually is meant to be 31 years after the first episode. For all I care, 374 was just a number someone on the writing team pulled out of their butt, and the film actually takes place in 2004. The theory is simply a concept, one interpretation of the millions of possible Spongebob timelines, and that's okay, because I'm just doing it for fun, so, you know, don't take it too seriously. So with that in mind, this coming March, let's all be mindful. The day that Krabs fries is just around the corner, so which of you are going to celebrate it with me? Let me know. I'll see ya. Thank you for watching the video, fellas. Welcome to the end thing. I don't have much of any content here to show you. Actually, this was my first long YouTube video. 
You know, this originated from a post I made over on Reddit. It got like 20,000 upvotes, which is nearly four times my previous top post. And I thought, you know, wow, I've added so many, there's so many people enjoyed it on Reddit. I might as well try putting it to YouTube or something like that. Anyways, you know, you guys, you guys kind of know the drill. I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe, except I'm not. I'm not going to ask you to like or subscribe or ring the bell because I want you to not do that so that you don't have to subject yourself to this bull crappery. Yeah, um... Yeah, like, okay, you know, you can, you can do it if you want to, but if you, if you don't, I'm not going to pressure you into it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of things to say. I'll see ya.